when we had the Lost Words first installed out there, the sculptures. Um, so the Lost Words is about birds that have gone extinct. And this painting is, of course, about birds that are on the edge of extinction. So it's just a nice uh, tie-in with those out there. And since the refuge is in Florida, we thought we would bring this back out as a fun and interesting thing to talk about. It also still sets up kind of a, a dichotomy or a comparison between um, different styles of wildlife art, which we like to introduce at this point in the galleries. You can also tie it to Kingswood. And I understand when I was gone, Bronwyn gave a nice little training about that piece. So there's just a variety of things that you can talk about even right out here. And I always like to say that that painting is as much about the Elk Refuge as the Refuge painting is. So that's another thing that you can talk about. Well, no, people are going to ask. Adults are going to ask, well, why did you cut the, um, the owl off? And, and what would you tell them when they ask that kind of question? Well, I wouldn't know what to say. Well, this painting is called On the Edge, and it's about birds that are on the edge of extinction. So they are on the edge also of the canvas. And there's a nice little uh, poem, line from a poem by Wallace Stevens at the top um, that says, but when the birds are gone and their warm fields return no more, uh, where then is paradise? So what are we going to do if we kill and get rid of all these animals? Hell. So the, this gallery has been the same for seven or eight years or longer, and so the sections and the topics are still the same, but when we lend things out, we have to find new artwork that fit into those sections. So starting over there, we got to get out our great Rungus uh, moose painting called The Sportsman's Moose. It fits in perfectly with the whole heroic male kind of theme over there, and the general topic of who was the audience for these pictures, who was buying them, and what did it mean to have one of these paintings in your house. It would say that you are a great sportsman, or that you are a great uh, naturalist, or a powerful, powerful guy. So that works really well right there. Um, also just, as a side note, trying to find something that is the right topic that's also the right size so that we didn't have to rehang a bunch of stuff was a challenge, but this works pretty well. Um, some of the things that we're missing that are in Florida will rehang when they get back because they're kind of they're essential parts of this installation. But a lot of these work really well, and it's nice to see some new things. Um, the the big big thing here is uh, Steve Kestrel's um, Silent Messenger, and this, as you remember, was in the conservation gallery. Um, we put it out; it was very popular. Um, it's really nice to keep it out, so we put it in here. It will go back in the Conservation Gallery in January, so it's only here temporarily. It doesn't exactly fit into one of these themes, but it is about how we portray animals and our role in protecting them or not. This weighs about 2,500 pounds, and this weighs about... 7,000, 5,000 pounds. So it's really hard to move. <laughs> so we don't want to move it. No, but we, we have these lifts that we use to wheel it around. It takes about four people to roll that and about eight people to push this one. Does it have wheels on the bottom? No, you have to put a jack underneath oh, it, and, and it's a complicated it. process. Um, this section, as you remember, is predator and prey, but also sort of battling creatures. So we put out a mythological scene, which hasn't been out in a while. This great uh, Emmanuel Fremier of a centaur battling a bear. Um, just goes along with the, the whole topic that we're talking about here. Um, and it's fun to bring out a mythological creature. You might, if you were do, giving a tour, tie it to the myth of the Mares of Diomedes that's out in the King Gallery. And then this is a great uh, sculpture by Barry, who was, who you know, um, was the greatest French animal sculptor and who was known for these um, scenes of conflict. And here you've got the post-conflict of the eagle and the heron. This is um, a great quality casting uh, by him that hasn't been out, I don't think, in a long time. So you can see the nice little details of the feathers, 
that great motion of the eagle's head. Um, it was a very nice, very nice convincing piece. This work we've uh, switched out before with uh, the Charlie Russell. The Charlie Russell painting is in the Russell show that's traveling around the country right now. Uh, and this is by Doug Allen, and it's the moments before you have the predator and prey um, interaction. Um, and I always kind of look over this quickly and miss the little uh, buffalo calf in there, who may be the object of these guys' attention. And if you remember, uh, the Russell painting it has wolves in it too, so it's about that same kind of dynamic. Going over here, this painting has never been out before. It's kind of interesting. It could use a bit of a cleaning, but still we thought it would be good to get it out. Um, this is called Belly Deep, and it's by ADM Cooper, uh, painted in 1886. Um, and relating to Charlie Russell, one of his first uh, most famous images was Waiting for a Chinook, and it was that um, cow, the cattle that was um, emaciated and sitting in the middle of blizzard and dying and in, in grave trouble. And that was about this horrible um, time period that we had around 1886, where there were awful blizzards and tons and tons of cattle died. But um, buffalo herds passed on as well. Um, and so this is like the Wyeth painting that's usually here, is a dark, kind of somber image of the bison. And this one is the result of natural causes, but is the, the state of the bison at this point was the result of our hunting them and killing them, etc. So um, it's nice to have that out. Um, it doesn't look uh, as bad as I thought it was going to in terms of its uh, condition, but um, I think it reads pretty well. Is that the original frame? No, this is not the original frame. So that's another thing that when we got in, I wanted to have the frame replaced and have it cleaned and all that stuff, but we just haven't had the time to do that. Over here, Animal in the Environment. So this, this also has been used in this spot before. It's another Bierstadt painting uh, where he's depicted an overall environment and placed an animal in it, which is the basic idea of this whole section. Uh, it's a wonderful, misty scene. Our um, founding volunteer, Pam McCool, told me that she thought this was painted in Central Park, not in anywhere out west, but we haven't verified that, but it's a fun story. And it's just called Winter Dawn, so it could be wherever. Um, we could probably do some research on the trees and figure that out a little bit farther, but it's a nice little story to tell. Um, has this great connection with the Lanford Monroe, just in the way that uh, the atmosphere is treated, and you can talk about the continuation of that tradition. Um, it's fun for that purpose. This, as we move over here, section, as you remember, is about moving into a more design-oriented era, a more modern era of painting, um, where the animal wasn't the main focus, but the emphasis was on the overall pattern of the canvas. And so here we've got two Dunton paintings and the Hennings painting that's all that's usually over here. And we got to bring out one that you don't see very often. This one has not been out very much, so it's fun, but it has those golden trees and the um, emphasis on the light um, and the landscape uh, that Dunton and Hennings were known for. Any questions about those? Where's the O'Keefe? All of these are in Naples, Florida, at the Baker Art Museum, except for the Russell painting, which is in the Rockwell Museum, uh, with the Russell tour. So, so the Naples, is there some theme to their show? It's called Exploring America, and the theme is basically the book, Wildlife and American Art, with the addition of some Western art from uh, a private collection here in Jackson. If you're in Naples, Go see the show. It's really they did a great job. Remember the theme of this Pathways Gallery was to start with local scenes and local creatures, and then branch out across North America as much as we could um, to show that sort of development uh, of the collection and of the museum and of the story that we're able to tell. So we have a couple pieces that were here before: Frank Tenney Johnson and Carl Rungus. 
we substituted the Delano that was out here with this other fantastic Delano um, that you may have seen before in the Nocturne exhibit. We've had it out. It was one, in Nocturne. Yeah. So it's been out once before, but um, not very often. And it's just a great, kind of an example of what I was talking about a minute ago with the Dunton and the Hennings painting, where the emphasis is on the whole design of the canvas. It has a graphic quality to it. It's not a portrait of a single animal like the landscape. It's a study in white and blue, you could say. Um, this is a little bit different, also white and blue. That seems to be a theme that we brought out. But this is by uh, Fuertes, who you'll remember. There was a big painting around the corner by him. Uh, that painting was more indicative of the work he did for himself as an artist. This is more like pieces he did to illustrate field guides, books about birds, etc. Um, because it is much more um, precise, giving you the anatomy and the feather patterns of this beautiful arctic kajirfong. Uh, and some nice, really nice habitat flowers in there as well. So why did you put that one here? Why did I put this particular one in this spot? <laughs> because it fit? That's <laughs> not the same thing. But you said, at first you said that these were local animals. Right. Well, but this is local. So the deer falcon flies over and lives in northern Canada, flies all over the world. So it is a local animal. The beginning is local and then it branches out as we go down the hallway. Up there is more local. Mm -hmm. And there's some Teton paintings, etc. But then as you go yeah. down the gallery, mm -hmm. we broaden the scope. Okay. So you've got, that's probably from Canada, um, so that could be anywhere. And then we get more and more Canadian, etc. Farther and farther afield as we go down the gallery. These are two more paintings that I think have never been out. This is a, has been in the conference room before. But these two are relatively recent acquisitions that have been out on view. This one is by a guy named John Schoner, who was a very famous uh, artist illustrator. About the same era, a little bit younger, I think, than Kuhn. Yeah, about 13 years younger than Kuhn. Um, he was known for doing science fiction covers for books, um, all kinds of fun things like that, and then also did some great wildlife work. This also, to me, has, again, a little bit more modern sensibility to it. Um, you can see he's just trying to figure out these planes of light and color. Um, and it's probably could be just as good a painting if you didn't have the moose in it or not. That's just a nice little added element down here. But the nice diagonal movement through it, gradation of color and light, um, really makes for a nice Is nice that canvas. Denali? Probably. Looks mm -hmm. like Yeah. Moose and mountains. Moose and mountains. Sometimes we don't know and we haven't had time to do research on where it came from. This one, however, we know where it is because it's called Below Grinnell Glacier. And does anyone know where Grinnell Glacier is? Glacier National Park. Great. And who was Grinnell? Famous explorer. He was a famous... Uh, conservationist, um, and there's a really good, there is, that I'm not remembering, of course, uh, there's a good story about him, um, and it's, there's a good story about them naming Grinnell Glacier after him, so this is a nice painting set in Glacier National Park about a famous conservationist, um, and so there's all kinds of great stories that can be told about it. Um, by Tucker Smith, um, I thought we could get out our I think it was probably our second biggest Tucker Smith painting after The Refuge. And we got this in 2012, so it really hasn't been with us for too long. Um, and it's just a really nice, very typical, I think, for Tucker Smith uh, painting. Um, so. Well, that's, so he's a little bit out of his um, geographical element with this picture, because doesn't he usually paint mostly down where he lives, Tucker? He does, but he's been traveling more. We have some Alaskan paintings by him. We have some paintings from Carmel by him. So, <laughs> so behind us, I liked this comparison. Um, this has been up for a while. John Clymer. Uh, that's Canadian scene. And then 
Uh, this is also Canadian scene, Patriarch of the Yoho. Yoho is a national park in Canada, too, I think. Um, so, but what's great about this is by Conrad Schwering, who you know from here as being a great Teton painter, but it shows that he went to other places in North America. And we have the great little uh, study of the goat up there, study of the landscape, and then how he has melded them together into this finished uh, composition. It's also a nice uh, contrast if you want to talk about two different painting styles. You've got this very loose, kind of fast style. He painted a lot of plain air, uh, being outside. This would have been a studio production. But um, he had a much looser, more impressionistic style. And then Climber, you can see, is much more tightly representational. Um, similar scenes, similar ideas, but painted in much different ways. So this is the new painting that's in this gallery. The other ones are the, all the same. This is Bow Valley. And in fact, this is called the Million Dollar View. And if you stay at the uh, Banff Springs Hotel and you get a really fancy room, you look out that way and you see this view. So this is an interesting thing for Rungus to uh, have painted. Um, it was even then like a very well-known, scenic, uh, amazing place. Um, and is, it fits in fairly well with the timeline that we've got established here. Um, there was what the study of a pronghorn that was there. But it's nice because it's a good example of a landscape. Uh, it complements those landscapes down there, but also these nice little um, landscape studies. So these he would have done in the field. Um, this size I think of him doing in the studio, but given where it is, and it was already an inhabited kind of area of Banff, he might have done this on site as well. We don't really know. Um, but it's a nice little addition to this. Uh, to this gallery and says something about BAMF and the importance of it to him. So that, I think, is all of the, the new uh, objects that we put out uh, and switching up for the Naples show. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer that. Next two weeks, I think, we'll change over into a show that features Bill Sacha, Kathy Turner, uh, Lee Riddell, Travis, Travis Walker, Jen Hoffman, Jen Hoffman. Hoffman. Kay Northup. Yeah. Not September. Yeah. Um, and so it's part of this View 22 project that we're doing with the Conservation Alliance. Nice. Um, so they'll be, they're bringing in 25 paintings uh, total. So five from each artist will be in the members lounge. And then there'll be one from each artist out in the Johnston Hall. So that's going to be fun. That'll be up through mid to late December. Are these um, part of the museum collection now, or are they just... No, they're just here to, uh, display. to, yeah, to display this so view to, the View 22 project. That they so do. they're not going to be up very long? Two weeks. No, two weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. But are these like the others that will be for sale? Quietly for sale, yes. <laughs> and then... Um, we just received a promised gift from Jane Smith, who you may know is a longtime supporter and friend of the museum, uh, the wife of Red Smith, who the Red Smith Award is named after. She passed away this fall, and in her estate was a gift of four paintings, uh, three Rongus and one Frieza. And after we're done with View 22, I'm planning on putting those in the members' uh, lounge and I think that'll be a really interesting and nice way to honor her and her gift but also to talk about the connections that we've made as a museum and um, bring out some new rungus and Frieza paintings that yeah. no one's ever seen before. So. Great. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Zach.